Hey there YouTube, it's Sebastian from SDC Canada back again with our third video in the introduction series of videos. It will be the third and last video that we will go over and then the videos moving forward will be a lot more specific to uh, certain aspects of the software. What we're looking at right now is a spreadsheet that we created in the first two videos. If you are new uh, to this video series and you don't have this information and you do not feel like recreating it, it will be available below. So please click on the link, download the XLSX file, and then you can follow along with us. Just as a really quick overview of what we have here, we are looking at uh, data that represents the amount of money we would spend on food a week. As mentioned previously, the numbers aren't as important as what we're going to do with the numbers. If you're looking and wondering that uh, breakfast is $2 a day for all seven days and you don't think that's realistic, well that's fine. It's not about that. It is about the actual numbers that we're dealing with. Before we do any fancy calculations, we are going to clean it up a little bit. Based on what we're looking at, we've got a whole bunch of columns that are, are maybe too wide. We've got uh, all this information in A1 that spans across multiple cells, we're going to actually use some of the tools available to us to clean this up a bit and then we will run uh, a calculation on forecasting how much money it's going to cost us uh, next week for food based on a percentage, which in that case we'll have to use absolute referencing. And we'll get to that in a second. First things first though, let's fix this title here. What we have is we have all this information here but it looks like it's in all the following cells, which we know is not correct. All the data is here, and you'll notice that A1 is the active cell, and on the formula bar, it's showing us the data that is in it. What we can do to make this a little bit neater is we can simply select A1, drag across to I1. We are essentially picking all those cells together. We're going to merge them together so that A1 becomes that large section of cells. We do that by simply making sure that we're on our home tab and we click merge and center. By doing that, as mentioned, all the cells have now been joined together as one large cell and it has put our information, our title, in the middle. Once that's done, we can actually quickly and effectively fix all the columns so that they are the proper width. You'll notice, as I mentioned a second ago, that Sunday, for example, has a little bit of wasted space that we can correct. Wednesday is, is cut off. We don't see the full word Wednesday. Many people know that we can actually simply just go between any, any column here and drag the column to make it larger or smaller. And that's fine, but when we're dealing with multiple columns, that would be really slow. It'd be a time-consuming process to have to go between every column and adjust it manually and hope that you get it right. The other thing you can do is, for example, noticing how my column B is now way too small, I can simply click on the B and what that does is it's going to select the entire column all the way to the bottom of the spreadsheet. If I hover my mouse over between B and C, what that allows us to do is it allows us to, as we've seen earlier, drag the column to make it wider. But if we want to be quick and effective, we can actually double click, double left click our mouse. That will automatically make the column that is selected the perfect width for the largest amount of data. In this column, our largest amount of data is obviously the word Sunday. By double clicking between B and C, it allows us to make that column fit the word Sunday and everything else within it. Again, you can do that for each column, but to me, I think that's just way too slow. We want to be more efficient. In order to be more efficient, all we need to do is go over here. So in between A, column A, and row one, our select all button, which we've spoken about in earlier videos, this thing here, when you click it, is going to select our entire worksheet, which is fantastic because now we don't have to sit here and go column by column by column and adjust it, we can simply select the entire sheet, go between any two columns, doesn't matter which two. This example will do A and B. So in between A and B, I'm going to double click. You will notice that instantly every column has been adjusted perfectly. 
it looks good, everything's nice and neat. Now that our columns are in great shape, why don't we go and format our numbers? When you have a spreadsheet like this, if somebody doesn't notice the top or the title, they may not know what it is that we're referring to. So for breakfast, is it two items? Is it two eggs? What is it? Is it two dollars? It's always um, a good idea to actually format the numbers once you've entered them all in. We know that these numbers represent money. So what we can do, instead of typing dollar sign two, dollar sign two, and so on, we can wait till the end, like we are now, and we can actually select the entire range of numbers, and we can then add that formatting to our data. It's a lot faster, it'll save you keystrokes. If you are one that likes to go uh, dollar sign two dot zero zero to represent two dollars for every cell, or for every cell that you want to add money to, that would just be crazy. So we're going to do it this way, which is the most effective way. From B4, we drag down all the way to I11. We now have our range of numbers selected. It's fantastic. Once you have this range selected, all we need to do is go up to, again, the Home tab, and you'll notice that there is, under the number formatting, a dollar sign. That dollar sign represents the accounting number format. It's going to set our numbers up with dollar signs and decimal places. If you look at the little arrow beside it, there are other options that you can choose. Let's say you want to make it English United Kingdom, so the pound, the euro. You can choose any one of these. Now, I'm in North America, so we're going to stick with the simple English United States version. Once I click on it, You'll notice now, all my data has been changed to include a dollar sign and a decimal place with uh, two decimals to the right because it is money. So 88 cents, so on and so forth. We could round those up by simply reducing the amount of uh, or decreasing the decimals to the right, but we'll leave it like this for now. It's, it's okay. It's going to serve the purpose. Everything's fantastic. One of the most important parts of this video is to understand referencing and what is the difference between relative referencing and absolute referencing. And in order to demonstrate that, what we're going to do is we're going to forecast what next week's total amount would be for each breakfast, snack, lunch, and dinner. And it, probably also the total too. Basically, we know that this week's total was $14 next week hasn't happened yet so we don't know what's going to uh, cause our totals to go up or down I mean we can make an assumption that maybe uh, based on the trend in food prices next week's food is going to increase by 10 percent therefore our totals for next week will be increased by 10 percent we can do a simple formula to do that calculation that's okay but what we're going to learn today is how can we do it effectively so that we can actually make assumptions, change the assumptions, and watch the numbers auto-recalculate. Our spreadsheet here has all these different columns that at this point are not uh, super important. What I'm going to recommend is that we temporarily hide from Sunday to Saturday. How do you do such a thing? Well, it's not that complicated. We're going to go up to our columns here from B, left click, drag all the way to H. What this is effectively doing is selecting all these columns all the way down to the bottom of the worksheet. Once they are selected, we can simply right click and select hide. Now just keep in mind, when you do hide your columns, you will run into some issues with merge cells. As you can see here, our title has kind of gotten messed up a little bit, and that's very normal. And for this lesson is not a big deal. What we do want to do is we want to make sure that we can forecast what our number is going to look like next week for food. In J3, I'm going to type the following, next week. In L1, I'm going to uh, create a cell, or I'm going to put information in a cell that's going to say INC slash DEC. What this cell 
uh, is saying is that in any given week, we can either have an increase in cost or a decrease in cost. When we're calculating next week's total, we are going to use a value that's found in cell M1. Whether it's an increase or a decrease, we're going to have that value in M1. And we are going to tell the system, we're going to tell Excel, always use that value in M1 to create our calculation. Normally, I ask my students, I go, are we going to have an increase in food costs or a decrease in food costs? And they'll always give us different uh, different answers. And, and sometimes they'll try and be funny and they'll say, oh, no, there's going to be neither, no increase or decrease. That defeats the purpose of this exercise. So we are not going to say it's going to stay the same. To make things easy, though, I will suggest that we use a value of a 10% increase. Now, a lot of people are like, well, how do I represent that in a cell? Like, How do I put a 10% increase in cell M1? Well, it's quite easy, actually. In order to find out what a 10% increase would be on an existing number, then you need to put in a 1, which represents 100%, and then you can put a decimal and then 1, 0, or 1.1. 1 .1. This number here in M1, once we press Enter, that represents 110% of our original number, which is, if you can see here, it's 14. Let's say, for example, there was a decrease in food prices next week, and we aren't going to spend the same amount of money. Let's say there's going to be a 10% decrease. Well, a lot of people are like, how do you calculate that? Well, it's quite simple as well. Instead of 1.10, we simply put in 0.9. You'll notice that 0.9 is a decrease because there's no one to the left of the decimal place, which means we are at 90% of last week's number. Now, if this seems a little strange or you're having trouble kind of understanding this, don't worry about it. It will make more sense when we actually run the calculation. So I'm going to leave M1 as 1.1. I'm going to press Enter. That is what I like to call my assumption cell, my pivot cell. Based on that cell, my numbers here will automatically recalculate. And we're going to see how this works. In J4, we need to create a simple formula that is going to take our total, $14, in I4 and multiply it by the increase found in M1. Some people who don't understand the software will simply say, okay, that's easy. I'm going to type in equals in J4, and I'm going to type 14 multiplied by 1.1. And yes, you will get the right answer for next week's total, for breakfast, that is. But it's not proper etiquette when you're dealing with Excel. You do not want to use hard-coded numbers in your calculation. So what I suggest is you always use a cell reference when at all possible. And we're going to see how this works. In J4, we, put, we type equals. Equals tells Excel that we're about to create a formula. So it's very important that you understand that all formulas start with equals. From there, I'm going to click on our total for breakfast, which is $14. And you'll notice that in J4, it doesn't input $14. It inputs the cell reference, which we know is I4. Perfect. From there, I'm going to click the, or I'm going to press the multiply button, which is the star. And I highly recommend that when you are working with Excel, that you use your numeric keypad on the right side of your key, uh, keyboard. If you don't have that because you have a laptop, I always tell my students, listen, it's, it's pretty cheap. You can go out to any retail store or even Amazon, and you can purchase a USB numeric keypad and plug it in. If you are going to be dealing with data entry and lots of numbers, that is critical. You must have a numeric keypad. Okay, so from there, we put in the star, and then we hover over to M1, and we click on it. When we press Enter, we are going to get a result. It's going to say, or it's going to show, that if there were a 10% increase in food pricing next week, our total would be $15.40. That's accurate. It looks right to me. It's perfect. But where we're going to run into trouble is when we actually say, okay, that's great. We've got ourselves a formula. It's giving us $15.40. Fantastic. We drag down to take us down to the total and you get that and immediately people freak out 
they're like, oh my god, what did I do? Something's broken. Did, did I screw up the formula? What's happening? Well, I'm going to explain to you what's happening. Basically, if you look at your total for, uh, uh, for breakfast, which is $14, you're going to notice in the formula bar that it says equals sum B4 to H4, which is perfect. When we dragged it down, though, it did something pretty neat. It said equals sum B5 to H5, basically saying that this total is related to all the different uh, breakfast totals for, um, for that week. A snack is doing the same thing. When we drag down, it says this total is equal to all the snacks for that week. So basically saying I4 is related to B4 to H4 as a range. When you drag it down, it says I5 is related to B5 to H5. And that's called relative referencing. And 99% of the time, that's going to be OK. What has happened here, though, is Excel has now applied that, uh, that same principle to our next week's calculations. So basically, it's saying that in order to calculate next week's total for breakfast, then 14 multiplied by 1.1 will give us 1540. In essence, saying this number 1540 is related to I4 multiplied by M1. When we dragged it down, you'll notice that it says, OK, well then, I5 must be related to M2. Problem being, there's nothing here. Therefore, your answer returns 0. What we need to do is we need to actually modify the formula in J4 that will tell the software that we want to always multiply by M1. We do not want to deviate from this cell. We want to be able to drag down, and it'll always take the number to the left and multiply it by M1. In order to do that, we need to make it absolute. To make it absolute, it's not that difficult. You just need to know what to do. In J4, when you have it selected, you can go to the formula bar, click inside the M1, so right in the middle, and you could either put a dollar sign in front, in front of the M and a dollar sign in front of the 1, or you can simply have your cursor in the middle of M1 and press the Function 4 key on the top row of your keyboard, so Function 4. Either way you do it, your formula must state equals I4 multiplied by dollar sign M dollar sign 1. What these dollar signs tell Excel is to lock onto M1 and not to move off of it, to make it an absolute reference. So that's the difference between an absolute reference and a relative reference. If I were to press Enter right now, the formula will now be applied to J4. If I then drag it down now, you'll notice that every cell I click on in the next week's formulas or the next week's total is going to be multiplied by M1 one exactly the way we need it to be once that's set up like that you can actually change m1 based on a different circumstance for example earlier we said what if there was a 10 percent decrease for the week well if you want to see how that's going to impact your numbers next week you go back up to m1 now and you type in 0.9 remember 0.9 represents a 10 percent decrease by pressing enter you will now notice that all your next week totals have auto recalculated themselves and you can do this numerous times the key though is to build your formula to make sure that your formulas are correct that you are using cell references instead of exact exact values well, I hope you enjoyed this video and like I said moving forward our other videos are going to be very specific and, and usually on only one topic Please like the, the video if you did like it, and as always, leave a comment at the bottom. If there's anything you need or anything you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll do my best to show it to you. Have a great day, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Take care.